Tara Jacobson, Marketing Artsly. So today I want to talk about 10 tips for when you're starting your vintage Etsy shop. And I have had an Etsy shop for going on three years now. Um, I have an older one that was digital products, but my vintage shop I started before. <laughs> so, so like everything I do in my life, I started right before we moved from Colorado to Tampa. And I got so many cool things in Colorado and now I have um, a bunch of cool stuff I've found here too um, but I but it's so hard to find information about selling vintage on Etsy that I thought that I would go through 10 things that I really know now that I've been doing this for a while so number one is buy low but not too low if you look at um, so these things are where I've bought a box lot so I'm selling something for $24.99 I'm trying really hard to get my average price up to about $30, um, but when you buy a box slot, you know how that is at the auction, you get a whole bunch of little stuff. Um, I bought a lot of candlestick holders, um, but like this Don Quixote is really cool. And so, and I just sold one of these um, uh, for like, 25 and then I charge shipping so if I wasn't charging shipping but I'm really trying to find more products that even I can sell you know pay a little bit more and then sell at a little higher rate because when I started selling I was like going to the thrift store trying to find everything for cheap selling it 10 times as much and I think we all start that way and so everything in my shop was like 15 20 dollars maybe maybe bump it up on 20 dollars but now you'll see a lot more where I'm buying something maybe for $10 and not getting 10 times markup, but selling it for $50. So that's something that you can really do to help get your store more um, manageable. So buy low, but not too low. Number two is don't buy a whole bunch of stuff until you know that it will work. So if we go back here, this is all my oldest stuff that I bought. I knew I have that. I have that somewhere. But I would buy these little scales. I, For some reason, I really thought that these um, scales would be super cool. Everybody would want them. They're at all the estate sales I go to. And I think I have maybe four or five of them listed. And nobody wants them. It's hysterical because, um, you know, if I really look at things now, I wouldn't have done that. And I have sold some of these. Um, I know that the, this is an older listing, and I have sold some of these um, things. But I, like I said, I used to, if you look at my store back then, it was all little things. I bought a whole bunch of these um, old man toolboxes because I love them for my stuff. And I thought, oh, everybody's going to love these. And I have sold some of them, but I stopped buying them because people don't really want to buy them. And I bought a whole bunch of these. So now... As you go back, you may want to kind of look at your older stuff. Oh, these uh, silver ringed dishes. Whenever I saw them at the auction, I'm like, oh, my God, those are so cool. Um, so I should get those. Now, with these chandelier crystals, first off, it's a really good search for me. So I get a lot of traffic to my shop for chandelier crystals. And then I had had, like, hundreds of them. And I just bought another lot of hundreds of them. And when I sell them individually, they sell a lot faster than when I'm selling the long chains of them. Um, but they are a good search term. So don't be too careful. I Like these vintage Mother of Pearls, I've sold a bunch of them. I had bought a huge lot of them, and I've sold a bunch of them. And... Um, but now I, I buy more silver plate because I sell a lot more silver plate. So, and one admission. I bought a whole bunch of these banjo thermometers because I think they're so cool. They hang on your wall in like your den or whatever. And they're called banjos because they're a circle at the bottom and then they have this tall thing that comes up. And I bought probably five of them and I never sold one and then I realized they're really hard to, they would be really hard to ship so I wound up just donating them um which is funny because I was like I just can't I they just have to go like they've been sitting there for five three years and I just can't even do them so that's number two don't buy a whole bunch of stuff until you figure out what sells number three check your Etsy SEO so 
Um, at the, I'm going to have a whole vintage Etsy SEO video for you guys, but the very easiest thing you can do is you can search for vintage, right? And see what people want. So vintage rings, vintage t-shirts, dresses, clothing, and I sell vintage decor. So I would want to, to say vintage decor. And so now we want decorations, home, lidded bowls, books for the bedroom. So things for the bedroom, um, kitchen. I sell a lot of vintage kitchen. And what you can do is just hit search. And you'll see, I want to get this off. And you'll see, you know, farmhouse decor is still super, super popular. So you would want to include farmhouse decor in your um, titles and tags. Rustic is, because if you're doing vintage, you really want to do that. Now, one thing to avoid is shabby chic, because that is trademarked by Rachel somebody. Um, but, but you can use the Etsy SEO to do that. And to kind of figure out what's already popular so that's fun okay so number three do your Etsy vintage SEO and I will have a whole video on that um, that could be all day um, niche or not niche okay here goes so I've seen some cute shops um, where they have um, like there's one I think it's maybe called cute overload or it's something like that where she has all different things that are um, like little planters and little, they're all like 1970s kitschy stuff, right? So you could do a shop like that. Um, I know uh, Viva Terra, whoops. One of the gals in one of our groups um, pulled out all of her jewelry so she has a decor shop and she has a jewelry shop. So if you find you like doing one kind of thing better than the other, maybe do have a separate shop. Now know that having a separate shop is hard. I tend to sell a lot of metal things. Now I'll buy the random, uh, you know, box lot of little figurines. I love selling, um, you know, I do like selling figurines. I tend to sell a lot of them, but I sell a lot of metal vases. I sell metal flower frogs. I sell metal um, kitchen stuff, brass. I just found that I like shipping metal. I'm not as scared of it as I am of glassware. Now, that having been said, a lady just donated me a whole bunch of glassware, so I will sell it, of course. But when I'm sourcing, when I'm looking, I tend to really look for glassware or um, metalware. So figure out what you like and do that. Manage your inventory is number five. Oh my goodness, this one. So I have a great inventory system that I accidentally sort of started when I started. So I have boxes that say Etsy one. And what I'll do, and I wanted to show you this. Oops, I'm going to have to go over to my, I lost my mouse. Sorry, there it is. I'm going to have to go over to my um, shop. So I use the SKU number to tell me where in where inventory is, okay? So I have several different places where I keep my inventory. It's, some of it's upstairs, some of it's downstairs. So this vintage rattan thing, uh, sewing basket, is in da, 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 the bookcase, okay? Um, which is awesome. So I don't have to go searching for this. I would get, I would be able to guess that this is in silver because it's a silver swan, but I don't have to guess because, uh, oh, it's in bookcase too. Look at that. And if you use that SKU, I use it for, where did I get it? So Florida estate sale. I have Denver estate sale. I have, um, like last chance thrift is one of my favorite things. And I don't really track track that but I like to know where I got my stuff so and then how much I paid for it if I know how much I paid for it um then I will put that in there okay back to this do, do, do. okay um so that's uh manage your inventory because if you're spending 20 minutes looking for something you're wasting money you need to figure out an inventory system and if you guys want to know like I'm really rabid about my inventory system. If you'd like me to do a video about that, it would be really different than my normal videos, but I'll be happy to show you my vintage 
um, inventory system if you leave a comment below and let me know. I guess I could do that. Um, should you sell smalls or bigs or both? So my friend, Tina, doesn't mind shipping giant things. She's like, my husband's a trucker, and if I have to figure out how to ship it, I'll do it. And I have really found over the years that I do not enjoy shipping big things. So I have, if you look at my shop, oldest to newest, um, which we can see from in our shop, because it'll show, you know, the listings over time, right? So um, if we go to the middle part, you'll see I have bigger things. And um, and I just don't enjoy doing it. So I have decided to really go to like this. Oh, God, that chair is going to be a pain in the ass to ship. And that's just not something I enjoy doing. This wooden tool primitive I'm probably going to have to make a box for because it's like this long. And, the, you know, so figure out whether you're the kind of person. Oh, let's talk about, uh, you know, um, glassware. Do you like shipping glassware? Um, those are all things to think about when you're sourcing, right? When you're getting stuff. And speaking of sourcing, number seven is where do you get your inventory? So I get most of my inventory at thrift stores around here, and I also get it at um, auctions and estate sales. So I live in Florida, and a lot of um, elderly people will come here before they pass on to the great yard sale in the sky, and so we have a lot of um, inventory here that I can do. I just went to the most amazing estate sale or yard uh, uh, estate sale um, last week and got so much cool stuff. So that's something to figure out in your area where you can find things. Some places have amazing thrift stores, and our thrift stores are okay, but they're not they're not amazing. The estate sales are amazing here, and then a lot of times you can do really well at our auctions. So figure out where you can source. Um, and I have a I have a free ebook about this. So I will make sure to put a link for that um, in the, the description below where I talk about sourcing a lot more. Uh, sell more of what sells. Oh this I know this feels sort of like um, like don't buy stuff until you know what you're doing. But but there's also a I search things out. So I can hardly keep doorstops in my shop because almost every time I list a doorstop, let's see if we can see it, if there's any doorstops in my shop. Uh, doorstops. Doorstop. Um, I may have a few listed. So I have just a few listed. I have sold so many doorstops. Like I go to auctions and if they have a big lot of doorstops, I will buy the big lot of doorstops. I'll just keep bidding until I get to buy them because say... A lot of 10 doorstops goes up to $129. Well, I can sell one doorstop for $129, and for some reason, Etsy thinks that I'm the queen of doorstops. So that's something that you can really um, start to find out uh, what sells, especially in your shop, right? Um, you'll get known for things, and then, and it's not even in the way of, the real world where you get known for things. It's the way of Etsy knows if they show my doorstops, they get sold more. So then they, if I have a doorstop, they show, it, it's like a really happy um, spiral. So sell more of what sells. Number nine, don't get freaked out about shipping. Oh my goodness. I teach a class in person and um, for Etsy sellers, for the little score people. And um the shipping just messes with everybody's mind. So don't get freaked out about shipping before you have to. If you're really freaked out of shipping, two things. Sell smalls, right? Get smaller things that you can fit in a regular box and you don't have to pay a bajillion dollars to ship. And number two, ship locally, like you, the United States, maybe Canada, if you're freaked out. Because any problem you have with shipping is going to be exasperated by, um, you know, shipping overseas. So if and I will tell you that I messed this up when I started. I bought this really heavy um, game, and I listed it for $17, I think. Or maybe I listed it for like $17 and $5 shipping or something like that. And it wound up costing, you know, the cost of a flat rate box to ship. So I didn't make any money on it. I think I lost money on it. 
Um, but then I figured it out, right? Like the first time you ship something, you're going to be freaked out and it's going to really mess with your mind. But after that, you'll get better at it. So I just am here to tell you, don't be nervous about shipping. And number 10 is have fun. I think that we all need to, as Etsy sellers and as vintage Etsy sellers, like so handmade sellers have the thrill in the making, right? Like they have the creative process of designing something, of doing all that. And we get the fun in sourcing things. We get the fun in finding a new niche and in having really cool things that we can sell. And so if you're if you're not happy selling something, then stop selling it. For example, I heard um, on one of my favorite podcasts, the the Scavenger Life, which is actually for eBay sellers, but they have tons of great um, tips for how to sell vintage online. Um, Scavenger Life podcast. It's on your normal podcast players. Um, but they were saying that they had um, they had a gal come on who sold '90s clothes right? Like all clothes, all the time. Uh, the scavenger life people, they sell shoes, right? And they'll, so they'll talk about it a lot, how they can make a good billion dollars selling shoes. Or um, one of the people came on and was a postcard seller and he sold one postcard at a time. So none of those appeal to me, right? Like none of those have an appeal to me. Managing, you know, thousands of postcards doesn't make me happy. Uh, uh, having to clean shoes and polish them doesn't make me happy. Having to polish silver makes me super happy. I have my barkeeper's friend and I just go over there and I do it. And, you know, so, so whatever makes you happy is what you should do to have fun with your Etsy vintage shop. So hopefully that helps Tara Jacobson, Marketing Artfully.